What's going on YouTube? How is everybody today? It's nice to hear. Uh, so today I want to talk about the new Breeders album. Uh, it's their 2008 album called Mountain Battles, released on 40 AD. 40 AD? 4 AD. Sorry, I got that wrong. Uh, it's their fourth album. First album in six years. Their last album being in uh, 2002. Uh, Breeders, if you don't know, they're the Kim Deal band. Kim Deal's the girl from the Pixies. These guys formed in 1988 from Dayton, Ohio. Pretty much formed just as a uh, creative outlet for the girls who were, uh, I think she was with her friend from uh, Throwing Muses and they were just feeling like they were playing sidekick in their main band. So they just started this band to get some of their, uh, you know, creativity out there, creative ideas out. And there's uh, quite a bit of creative ideas on this album, I'll say. Uh, to me, this album was just kind of like, you know, one of those mixed review, mixed emotion kind of albums. Like, it was half good, half kind of, you know, meh. Uh, like, there are a lot of good songs on here. The Breeders are, you know, they're a fairly talented bunch, for sure. Uh, I think if you're a Breeders fan, the main reason you're a Breeders fan is just because of Kim Deal's voice, her being the main selling point on this album. Uh, but yeah, it's a very pretty album, like even the songs I didn't really like, the songs I weren't really feeling, like the whole album sounded really nice, like the production was very clear and pristine, all the instruments sounded really nice, it had a lot of like low end, not a lot of frills, like hardly any like bells and whistles on this album, just, just the instruments is all I heard. Uh, Steve Albini actually produced a lot of this album, and then the other, the other two producers were Erica Larson and a guy named Manny Mieto. But yeah, like it was like it was pretty good. Like I found some of the album to be lackluster, but there were like some good songs in here. Some songs that definitely grow on you for sure. But uh, like my favorite songs in here were uh, number five, German Studies, uh, which is a song that was all in German. I didn't even realize it at first. I thought it was English. Just wasn't picking up on what she was saying. But until I realized she's singing in German for some reason. And song Walk It Off is good. Song No Way. Song It's the Love. But then there's all these kind of sluggish kind of like. I don't know how to even describe them, it's like shoegaze or like some sort of dirge kind of rock going on, but it's just like kind of lo-fi, but not, not, I'm not trying to say lo-fi is bad, but it was kind of like lackluster, I don't know, like it sounded kind of like something half-assed was going on, even though the production was still really good, like they did a good job of making the song sound nice, but I was just waiting for something to happen, waiting for some sort of like, some sort of payoff, but Whatever, they're the breeders, they don't have to pay me off, they don't need to have me like their album or anything. And there are good songs on here, like I said, I don't want to give it too bad of a review, but... I don't know, to me there's no real standout songs on here, like nothing really, you know, blew my mind too much. It's just an album that's kind of fun to listen to at parts. At some parts, to be honest, like I got a little tired, got a little sleepy at some points. Uh, just sounds to me like there wasn't a lot of like immediacy on here, but they're not a band that really needs a lot of immediacy. Like, it's Kim Deal. She doesn't have to do anything she doesn't want to, you know? So, I'm pretty sure she made this album with all the right intentions. You know, I don't want to say it was uninspired, because, you know, why would she make an album if she wasn't inspired to make one? I don't, I don't know. But, like, the album cover here with all this broken windshield kind of glass and edgy shards of, you know, danger kind of glass things going on doesn't really represent the sound in here at all. There's no, like, jagged sounds or like anything that would be like breaking windows, breaking glass or anything like that. Like it kind of represents that it should be edgy. It's got this weird like razor edge on there, but there's no edge on here at all that I could hear. Just kind of like, you know, some kind of mid-tempo, upbeat, alt-raw kind of art punk songs going on. And they're coupled with like, there's a kind of a flamenco song on here and a country song. I don't know, but it was all very pretty sounding, that's for sure. And it also comes with this on the inside. I'm not sure what this is supposed to mean. Like, it's a ticket book, I guess. It's got just more bright colors and other pictures that don't really represent the music at all either. Like, broken glass and all this, like, bright, vibrant colors going on. I don't really understand that at all, but I don't know. Like, I don't mind a lot of Breeders music. I thought Last Splash is a pretty good album. I didn't mind Pod. Like, I love Pixies. But yeah, 
there was a funny quote in uh, Rolling Stone magazine, and they wrote in the reviews that Mountain Battles is a record the late Breeders fan Kurt Cobain would have loved. Like, how the fuck do they know if Kurt Cobain would have loved this album? What a shitty marketing ploy, like, just to say Kurt Cobain would love it and try to get people to buy it like that. Pretty dumb. But yeah, not a, it's a pretty, I'd say it's half good. Half good album for sure. It's a little slow, a little uneventful for my taste. Kind of, like I said, it got a little kind of like, dreary to listen to. But yeah, there were good songs on here. Like the songs I listed at the beginning were good, but you know, it could have used a little more bombast, could have used a little more punch. But that's just me. Maybe I don't get the breeders, I probably don't. Uh, that's fine, maybe if you guys want to explain this album to me or something, go right ahead. Uh, breeders, Mountain Battles, released in 2008 and 4AD Records. Meh.